Hi folks, this is John Thornton with the Pain Cure Clinic, where we teach people how to cure chronic pain. Okay, in this episode, we're going to talk about the most popular action item for curing chronic pain, which is journaling. Popular because it's the only action item Dr. Sarno talked about in his books. And here's a clue here, there's actually a lot more of them he didn't talk about. But a lot of people complain that journaling has not worked for them. So hang with me till the end of this video because I'm going to show you just how to make journaling much more effective and it's going to make a big difference. Now the origin of most chronic pain and chronic illness is, among other things, repressed negative emotions. We repress our emotions because it's not socially acceptable to go around yelling and screaming at everyone. As much as I'd like to, you just can't do that. So to accommodate society, we learn to tamp down our natural urges to express ourselves and instead end up repressing our emotions and that's what eventually leads to problems. Journaling, on the other hand, is a safe way of expressing yourself, thereby diffusing repressed anger before it gets a chance to create pain. Journaling works great, it costs almost nothing, and anyone can do it. It's kind of like having therapy session without the therapist. How do you feel about that? Hmm. Now, there's been a lot of clinical research done on the benefits of journaling. What might seem like a benign process actually has real health benefits. Here's just five of them. Journaling reduces stress, it improves immune function, it improves memory, it boosts mood, and it reduces and eliminates chronic pain symptoms. Wow. Now let's take a look at how to journal. Start by buying an old school paper journal or download one of the many apps available for your phone. Pick whichever method is more appropriate for you or you can use them both, it doesn't really matter. Next, decide when and where to journal, possibly in a comfy chair in the morning or at your desk at lunchtime or maybe in bed at night before lights out. Pick whichever is more likely to create a regular routine and then just dive in and start writing. Plan for five to ten minutes each time you journal and don't overthink it. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to have the beneficial psychological effects that we're looking for. Just express yourself at least once a week or every day is even better. So what exactly should you be writing about? Well let's take a look at that as well. Write about what you did and what happened to you that day or the day before. Next, revisit the tough problems and challenges and revisit the difficult people and difficult situations that you had to deal with. Then, explore your emotions about the day in a kind of stream of consciousness way and how it affected you. Were you happy, nervous, fearful, pissed off, stressed out? Whatever you felt, write it down and then write down possible solutions to the day's challenges. This is a key component to the therapeutic value of journaling. Clearing psychological baggage from your subconscious so that it's not piling up and being repressed. And then lastly, express gratitude for the things that happened that day. Itemize at least three good things. Remember, it's not all bad. We tend to focus on the bad, but there's always good stuff that we're not giving credit to. Write it all down. Journaling is a great start, but it's a very passive exercise. So here's another post-journaling step that's really gonna help you maximize your results. Now, in order to get the most out of the journaling process, you'll need to add action steps that lead to resolution of the daily challenges that came up in the journaling process. For example, you may have journaled say seven times last month that you hate your one hour commute to work each day. It's no fun, it's a waste of time, you hate it and who wouldn't? And then maybe you have also written down a solution which is to find another job closer to home, but you haven't done anything about it. 
Well, of course, journaling the same problem over and over again without taking action is kind of the definition of insanity, right? So effective resolution of real problems in the real world is also necessary to reduce tension and cure pain. That's just part of the deal. You've got to use the journaling process as kind of a blueprint for taking real action. And then you've got to process any issue that is repeatedly showing up in your journal and then, and only then, the pain will stop. Okay, that's it for this episode on journaling. If you like this episode, hit the subscribe button for more videos coming all the time. And check out our free information and coaching options and our video masterclass at paincareclinic.us. And thanks for watching.